listening to I Am Refocused Radio with your host, Shamaya Reed. This show is designed to inspire you to live your purpose and regain your focus. And now, here's your host, Shamaya Reed. Hey, welcome to I Am Refocused Radio, man. We are here once again. And man, today, we have another awesome show lined up for y'all today. We're going to talk to our special guest, Daniel Moody. He is a creative coach and songwriter. He is on a mission to reignite the creative flames and help us all appreciate a whole world of creativity. And he's going to tell us about his career. But first and foremost, I want to welcome Daniel to the show. Say, hey, man, how you doing? I'm doing great. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, man. I know I had a short introduction, but I want you the honors to tell us about you and your career because you're not just in the music space. You're also a photographer, a yoga teacher, and performer. So with that said, tell us a little bit how you got into your music career. Thank you very much. Yeah, I've been all over the spectrum. Uh, come from a family of creatives. Uh, grew up trying just about everything under the sun. I just, I love art. I love creating. I'm I love the process of letting things come through, whether that's visually auditory, whether that's a performance, uh, a totally embodied character in acting or, or, or singing on stage. Um, the, the, the process of being lit up by creativity has just totally enamored me, um, much to my chagrin, trying to be, you know, academic in school or trying to be a professional. I always had to find some edge that allowed me to be creative in the process or I got completely bored or soul dead, as I would put it, about six months into any occupation that didn't fully utilize some sort of creative skill. So I come from a family of musicians and performers. Uh, my brother was a Grammy Award winning songwriter and producer. And so I, I grew up believing that it was entirely possible to, to make it in the music industry, however foolish that may have been. Um, but I, it took me down a long rabbit hole of writing for other people, um, doing custom licensing. And eventually I, I let go of all that, started a career as a photographer, which actually was following my father's footsteps. And then music just never let me go. I continued writing. Uh, more and more, the, the music became my own. Um, I was allowed to essentially write from a genuine, authentic place once I had let go of any expectations of trying to make money with it or trying to make a career out of it. And thus, it sort of made its its way back into my life, uh, more on a local sphere. And then also in the coaching world, you know, during the 2020 um, breakdown of everything. I, I, like the rest of the world, got to go through my own identity crisis and ask what I was doing with my life. And there was this, as there's essentially the the role of any student, to eventually they have to become a teacher in order to pass through a certain level. So I, I started turning around and and giving my 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 gift of encouragement. Uh, I I really have uh, a genuine held belief that every single one of us has a creative divine spark within us that should uh, come fully into this world. And so the the coaching paradigm just gave me a, a label or a container that was an excuse to go around uh, encouraging the light and flame and others to to burn as brightly as they could to get past the the limitations of the critic to just allow creativity to flow through them in whatever form it wanted to uh, and thus i i get to not only um during the day create uh fun and interesting uh visual storytelling through photo and video but during during the night i usually am either playing a performance or i'm hosting something called dad jam where i'm getting dads together so that they can pretend they have a garage band again and they're they're basically just getting to explore and improvise and getting past the limitations and getting back to what they love so that's that's in a nutshell uh what i do with my days that's pretty cool tell us more about the whole thing with the what do you call it the dad uh jam what, what do you call it Dad jam. Yeah. Okay. So as it were, uh, men in particular have a really hard time keeping or making new friends. So as we get older and we get out of high school or college or job or we move or we go into parenthood, especially going through that threshold, we lose access and time and freedom to to old, easily accessible friendships. And so we go through this this transformation. And a lot of times, um, like myself and like most dads that I've known, they just they don't have their old friends anymore. They never have time for for doing fun and leisure activities. The few men that do manage to maintain their friends, uh, you know, they're rare and far in between. And so uh me and my circle are 
what I like to think of as courageous befrienders. So like a dad will usually be uh, with their kids at a park and there's other dads kind of like a satellite alone watching their kids play. And my, my impetus uh, is to just go up to them and start a conversation and, and start playing with the kids and start getting actually back into the enjoyment of fatherhood. And I take that all the way to, you know, my love for music is most, I'd say like, at least six or seven out of 10 guys that I meet used to play some sort of instrument, used to be in a garage band or love music enough that they're willing, that they've always had this longing or burning to play an instrument. So a culmination of those things is to bring dads together out of their isolation bubbles at home uh, and get them with an instrument back in their hands so they can just totally play in a nonverbal space unless they're on the mic, which occasionally some of them are brave enough or they 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 love it enough or they have experience doing it. But I just encourage dads to get together, play music, whatever genre, whatever skills, skill level, whatever instrument. You know, sometimes we're acoustic, sometimes we're amplified. Uh, I'll jump around on whatever instrument is needed to kind of balance it out. And it's it's one of the joys of my life, really, is because I, I love jamming. I lo Basically, you put me in, in a jam, I will improvise in whatever genre is there. Uh, and I'll just do an, another idea after another idea after another idea. Just basically, I, I love the next uh, song. The next experience is my favorite experience. So um, I just, I, I bring that kind of fire to this equation. And usually it, it just creates an opportunity for dads to make friends. My ultimate dream of it is that dads will find other dads to make bandmates with so that they can reignite that flame for no other reason than to just love playing music. And then if they ever go out and perform again, that's great. You know, maybe a little money in their pocket or a little bit of um, enjoyment of of taking it out and showcasing their love or their 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 talents, but ultimately the just the love of making noise. That's that's the that's I feel like is the common denominator of all musicians is that there's something about sound, vibration rolling through your fingers, rolling through your voice that is so satiating to part of the soul that um, I'm I encourage anybody to get back into it. And so I created this container called Dad Jam, where it's just dads get together play music. Once again, listen to Refocus Radio talking to our guest today, Daniel Moody. He is a creative creativity coach and songwriter. And yeah, I really like the whole dad jam thing. I think that's genius. And you're helping them deepen relationships and build communities. So how have you seen guys just be like, yo, like this is really helping me right now? And what's some of the things they've been telling you as far as feedback? Well, one of my favorite things to hear at the end of a dad jam is I could do this for the rest of my life. <laughs> that was, that was a quote from the last time we had, got together is, uh, they just don't want to stop. Um, it, it, it scratches an itch of, uh, you know, something that they're, they're never really getting a part of themselves that is never really getting fed anywhere else to just have that sort of liberation to just totally play. You know, it's actually the sign of uh, a certain level of not only mastery, but but also freedom to play. It's it's the optimal state of being. You know, you talk about people in a flow state. Well, being in a play state uh, is is allowing yourself to just totally riff, to totally jump around wild and free. And that's extremely liberating to the spirit. So that's the kind of feedback that I often hear is I could keep doing this, man. I just one more. Let's when's the next one. Um, and then in the more one on one type of coaching that I do, I do specifically. Um, well, I've done a lot of fatherhood coaching. I'm actually part of uh, an organization called Fatherhood Unlocked. And this is deep interpersonal work. It's for men that are trying to unlock the. The restrictions that they had around their own their own fatherhood from whatever legacy they inherited from their parents or you know whatever limitations they have a lot of guys have a lot of issues with anger um a, a lot of issues with expressing themselves in a way that isn't angry so if they're they're experiencing a great deal of resistance around um play with their kids you know a lot of times that comes up as stubbornness as a, a sort of a freeze up uh, and so opportunities to come together and, and just play music is one way of doing that. Another thing um, that I really enjoy doing, doing is, is uh, songwriting. So 
the the process of songwriting is not only the musical it's the it's the uh the singing element of using your own voice uh to express something and then there's the the lyrical aspect of of articulating your story and expressing something that is truly uniquely for you so um some a program that i run is called song for the soul and uh essentially we we turn our grief into a song so that's that's like the 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 depths of it you the easy surface level stuff is we just get together to play music the next level is we we write whole songs together with an intention of either expressing love for our kids um expressing love for our wife just expressing something about ourselves that is unique and free and that the, the greater depth of that is actually utilizing the artistic practice of songwriting to unlock trapped uh, grief, gr trapped emotion, um, things that are usually too hard for us to just sit down and talk about. It's I, you know, I I've realized this and with my, you know, my peers and and different um, different mediums of art, they use their art as a method for catharsis, for therapy uh, of their own uh, wound, of their own trauma. And there's an opportunity in in songwriting that is particularly visceral because it activates the the thinking, the feeling, uh, and the, the the doing minds. It, it's um, it's incredibly powerful to have a song that was written specifically for you that allows you to sing it with your own voice over and over again so that whether tears come up, whether um, you're, you're resonating with that part of yourself that has been unseen for so long, it's a remarkably healing device. Um, so that's some of the, the really, really affirming work I've gotten to do um, and the kind of feedback I get from that. Well, I, I ended up actually writing a song with a friend of mine who had lost their child and that song they listen to every day um and i can't i can't say to you how how affecting that is to me personally but i also know for anybody who's experienced great loss or great great challenge to to have a tool or let's say um to have something that is a, a pure unique creation for you um that moves you on a soulful level uh, you know, music therapists, they actually can help someone speak who has lost the ability to speak. They can sing often when they cannot speak. So there are things that music can do that that are not only healing, but can can work around certain obstacles that we have. So I've I've found uh, a friend of mine. She really wanted her dad. He's been a musician for years. She really wanted him to to, to write songs. He had talked about it, but he'd never gotten into it. So he got into my course. We started working one-on-one -on -one, and now he's unlocked something. He's, he's writing songs all the time. He wrote a song for his daughter. That's absolutely adorable. And the kind of healing that takes place for a person to the first time he ever brought up a song about his mom, he couldn't sing it for me because tears would come every single time. And he would always apologize and say, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I was like, no, that's exactly the point. The fact that it's those words are bringing up those those feelings that tears are coming up to the surface is the work that we're after in, in the depths and, and the greatest possible gift this kind of stuff can bring to us. The greatest gift that music or songwriting can bring to you is that it actually brings healing, catharsis and, and transformation. So those are the those are the stories that really um, resonate and give me uh, they, they really uh, kindle my flame for this work. Yeah, it sounds like a brotherhood, a safe space to really just dive deep in what is going on in someone's, you know, individual life. Also, when you are in these discussions, I feel like it's not just, you know, the arts, but y'all end up probably talking about some heavy stuff. <laughs> so hmm. how how has that, uh, like, the word spread out? Like, man, like, you got to do this dad jam <laughs> because you're going to end up writing a whole book about your life, <laughs> you know? Well, you know, Dad Jam, it's one of these things, um, the first time somebody hears about it, they kind of fall in love with the idea. Uh, but what, one of the things that's interesting about men in particular is it takes a long time for them to recognize that they need something or for them to admit that this is something that I actually need or want. And then I'm going to actually act upon it and go do it. Usually they have to hear it seven or eight times before they act upon it. 
So it's one of those things that's it's slowly growing and it's slowly yeah. developing, but it's uh, I think it immediately resonates in the hearts of of everybody that listens to it. And it's true. I mean, there's a depth. You know, I I do music retreats and it, we we go out into a beautiful place like the Buffalo River in, in Northwest Arkansas, just some 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 place out in the mountains next to some water. And that wilderness in and of itself has a healing power. It's a freeing, liberating power. You're not inside of a box. You're not in air conditioning. You're just out in the wild, out in your natural habitat. And then we have music around the fire, which seems to resonate and glow inside of you, pretty much adding years back to your life, um, allowing things to vibrate through you that rec- that remember themselves, that you remember that you're actually alive. That has its own catharsis. And then what I love is just the, the depth of the container allows for natural conversation that's unforced. You know, a lot, a lot of times you hear of things like men's groups or men's coaching that there's there's an icky feeling around it because you're you're afraid of the the forced nature of it and a lot of the dialogue around it feels um very therapeutic uh, and there may be some internal resistance around that but fundamentally if you just get into a group of mature men that are coming together for uh, just genuine connection to themselves and to each other there's an opportunity for natural conversation to take everyone to a depth um, that in and of itself, the ritual of of coming around the fire together, of playing music together, and and of being honest and genuine as you are, uh, it does a lot of the work of settling us into a place of trust. And then from there, there's a feeling of of safety to to just talk very vulnerably. And I and my 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 cohort of guys, we just tend to it, it's our personal culture to just be very vulnerable, to be very honest. And that's actually a place of strength for us. We lean into that vulnerability and we not for me personally, it's been one of my greatest resources because I'm an artist. I, I draw from my own personal well of experience to be able to create something. So the more honest and vulnerable I am as an individual, the more access I have to the depths and and to the the great universality of my personal story. So when we bring that kind of depth into a, a conversation space around the fire, where there's already a deep intimacy, where there's already the play, and there's already the collaboration of music, it it naturally does a lot of the work and lets down the guard of resistance of you know we're we're coming to de- together to do you know the work quote unquote. And really the the work is just being um, it's just maturing. It's evolving. It's recognizing that you're both a masculine and a feminine. You're both uh, a a doer and a and a being. You know, you have a whole spectrum of experience inside of yourself that we need to look inside and experience that if we're actually going to be a whole person that can act confidently um, with purpose in the world. So I'm uh, I love I just love this work. Once again, talking to Daniel Moody, a creative creativity coach and songwriter. And like we said earlier, he's on a mission to help people, uh, specifically men, like just do what they need to do to live this life and, and live it in, in a great space and and heal from where they need to heal from. I think that's a that's a great concept you have where you are creating a safe space for people, especially men, to, to be men. And it kind of feels like sometimes you look in this world that kind of lost that space, you know. But for your experience, why is it so important for for men to be, you know, with other men to kind of sharpen each other and, and to be, you know, real authentic? That's a great question. You know, the it seems to be universally understood amongst women when I talk about this. There, there may be like a cultural narrative that why should men get together or, or you know, just a question mark around that men's only spaces. It seems um, it seems like it has this this heritage of taboo because um, very realistically, it has been a lot of men's only spaces. But there is something that actually predates what I would consider the patriarchy, you know, back to matriarchal or patriarchal cultures. But at the time of the village is how far back this goes. Human beings need need to be around other human beings. We require a village that is actually our optimal state of operations. We need a tribe of 
other human beings who we were raised with, we were born, they know our song from beginning, middle to end. They, they, we share a story and a culture and an experience together. And within that, the men would have circles of men, the women would have circles of women, and then there would be a broader circle of the whole community. The reason why men need each other is there is something unique that occurs. And I, I, I don't say this as some sort of theoretical space. I, this is an experienced knowledge that predates um, psychology, that predates our perspectives as far as concepts go. This is just something that men have always had and experienced as, as the hunting tribe together uh, that would go out and be alone. And they would eventually, there's a, an initiation that occurs when a young man enters into the father's house. And this is very significant because the young man needs to first be held within the mother's house where he is nurtured, where he is loved, where he learns how to love himself, where he learns how to be loving and soft and open and receptive. And then the transition into the father's house is to learn the other end of the spectrum, which is how to be fierce, how to be a warrior, how to hunt, how to push past your discomfort and to ask more from yourself than to just um, to, than to just be comfortable, than to just be satiated. There's actually so much about the old practices of male initiation that called for the individual to experience uh, hunger and thirst and nakedness out in the wilderness so that genuine humility, like in the face of a huge storm, when you realize that the power of God or the power of the universe is so far beyond your control, there is a deep humility that strikes the nervous system that is the necessary physiological state one must be in in order to learn something new. The student has to be receptive, to be has to believe that the teacher knows more than them in order for them to be open enough to absorb new information so that then they can go test it in the world and learn it through experience. So the, 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 the boy has to go into the, the father's house into amongst a, a group of men who are hopefully mature, who are hopefully integrated and full beings that are not just hyper-masculine, but also had full access to their own femininity, recognizing that you have to, you are both ends of the spectrum. Everything is yin and yang. And, but to, to, to deny the masculine its space is to basically deny the opportunity for the, the, the young man to find out what it means to be a warrior and ultimately one day what it means to be a king. And to be a king is not to be a king of others, it's to be the king of the self. So if, if I do not have mastery over my own desires and my own calling for comfort, I am not going to uh, be anything other than just a uh, a perpetual uh, desire machine. I'm going to be chasing after this and running away from that. Never will I transcend all of those things in order to do something greater than just uh, appease my own desires and my own need for satisfaction. So the, the father's house is a place to get humbled. And this is something that we experience with other men. There's a certain humility to it. And remarkably, there's uh, this idea of the male mother, the, 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 the man that can come into your life and show you the, the full strength uh, of masculine self approval to be uh, fully strong, to be fully assertive, to speak my own voice, um, to, to deny uh, somebody else's argument and, and, you know, to be in opposition or to be assertive enough to, to be in dialogue with someone rather than just nodding your head and agreeing with whatever's being said to you. But to actually say, you know, I actually see it from a different perspective to be that level of confident in your own voice to, to be assertive in the world. While at the same time, this, 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 uh, elder or mentor can be a person who shows you that kind of strength while also having a heart for you while holding you in the level of acceptance that allows you to accept yourself at a greater level because everybody who's been through teenagehood knows that you just have to go through this awkward experience of trying on being a human being in the world. When you're a child, you're not second guessing yourself, you're just playing. But then you enter into this level of adulthood where you're supposed to know everything, you're supposed to know who you are, you're supposed to know what this identity is and how it's supposed to interact in the world when none of those things are obvious and absolutely everything in life is learned through trial and error. So you get into a, a circle of other men who are going through this 
awkward transition phase together and you level each other up and you learn how to to spar with each other in dialogue and spar physically. I can't express just how important it is to have another man to hug, another man to physically push against, another man to um to to show you uh, an appropriate place to put the full capacity of your strength. You know, I've um one of my favorite activities is Brazilian jiu-jitsu because I am testing my body against another body in a, in a way that's not aiming to hurt each other, but in a way that is intending to exert my force over another. And that is, is, a, is a capacity within the human being that wants to be turned on, wants to be switched on, wants to be used, that is so satisfying that nothing else can come close to touching it. Just like playing music, there's nothing else that can totally fulfill the desire for playing music like playing music. So to, to fully embody the warrior, to spar with another person mentally or physically is absolutely required. And men need other men to do this. Because if I go try to Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu roll with with my wife, she's going to be like, Daniel, get off of me. I need to, I need to do something else. Right. Uh, it's not the right place for it. And also too, like sometimes she doesn't want to be argued with. She wants to be seen. She does want to know that I can spar with her intellectually, but I don't, she's not looking to be dominated in the same way another man will respect fully being dominated in dialogue by another man. Like I said, man, it sounds like a great brotherhood. So, someone listening to this right now, guys listening to this right now, they're like, man, is he online? I mean, what, what, what can I get involved in this? Is he had this available, you know, uh, virtually or is it only for, you know, people in his local area? I mean, you have a website uh, that we can give. It's danielhuntermoody.com. But how is this community set up for you? Like, are you allowing people virtually or what's that look like? Yeah, great question. Yeah, I, I do have uh, availability online. Um, I, I, I have an online course called Be Creative Again. That's that's specifically for people that have, you know, love music, want to get back into the process of songwriting. That's an online thing. I also um, I'm hosting an online open mic uh, which people can go to my website to to read about, and that's essentially a space to come express yourself. Um, come sing a song that's an original. Come, come use your voice and 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 uh, be connected in that way. And also, kind of like work up your skills and your courage to sing in front of other people. Um, and I, uh, I do one on ones as well, one on one coaching for the, the deep interpersonal work, the songwriting, and and like I said, song for the soul, which is a I do that one on one, but also in in a group format. Um, and then finally, I, I host um, uh, seasonal uh, music retreats. So that's that's in Arkansas. Anybody can come to that. Anybody's more than welcome. Um, so the the opportunities are there. Uh, you can just check out my website to see what's available. But honestly, anybody that's interested, you know, and I'm participating in, in like an online group or, or coming to a retreat. Please reach out, either email me or or let's have a phone call because anybody that's basically lit up by what I'm talking about, I want to connect with. That's that's the the beauty and fire of this work for me is just uh, whether now is the time, whether, you know, which one of these containers is the right thing for you is is second to just let's connect um, and see what what's low hanging fruit in your life to just be quite just to brighten your flame a little bit to add a little bit more creativity into your life uh, what's some opportunities right there in your environment for you to cultivate um more space like this in your life because that's what i want to encourage is people out there who have the desire the will to that are that are lit up by this idea by by um, being connected to themselves and and being fully expressive as they are, seeing that as a value in the world, it, it really does ripple out. Uh, I can't tell you how invaluable it is to me to have the groups that I have, that I run, but also that that I'm a part of the of peers that um, feed and nourish these parts of my soul. So don't hesitate to to reach out, set up a call with me. I'm I'm always happy to talk to another another uh, kindred soul out there. Once again, talking to Daniel Moody here on RB Focus Radio. You can also follow him on Instagram, Daniel Hunter Moody, and I suggest you just shoot him a message because I think you probably going to get a lot of guys be like, yo, like, I needed this, like, a long time ago. Like, I should have yeah. been doing this a long time. Like, what you're doing sounds cool. Like, I mean, you hear a lot of this going on, like, in churches and stuff. But 
like I said earlier, we live in a world today where it's not really advertised a lot. I mean, it's basically like scroll, 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 and go to sleep. And stuff like this, I think, is going to spark a lot of people's uh, ideas and be like, yo, I need to get involved because it's needed. I think it's needed more than ever. I mean, we're not careful. We're just going to be, like, isolated forever. <laughs> I couldn't agree more. It is needed. Yeah, it was needed a long time ago. And I think it's basically a call to that village, a return to the village. We we need each other. And it's it's nothing to be ashamed of. It's it's our birthright. It is it is the basic function of a human being to be connected to themselves and others. So let's get to it. Awesome, man. Well, we've been talking to Daniel Moody. Once again, go follow me on, on Instagram, Daniel uh, Hunter Moody. And also, you can go to his website, DanielHunterMoody.com. Uh, Again, man, thanks for your time, man. Absolutely. Thank you. It's such a pleasure. Thank you.